Hello, Mike Prendergast, Historical Combat Academy, Dublin. Today, a short video on the fundamentals of the Italian two-handed sword, according to Pietro Monte. There are a lot of sources for historical fencing or HEMA. They often begin near the beginning, but it's hard to know what implied knowledge the trainees of the day were expected to have before they get to the part that's in the book. Monty is very interesting because he gives us the first blows which we learn or which we teach in his book The Collectinia, which was published posthumously in 1509. In The Collectinia, he teaches us what he would have taught the men-at-arms of the court of Milan in the 1490s. So, let's say a little bit about the sword and a little bit of what this video is for. I'll start with the video is essentially a short intro to what the techniques are that you could use for solo drilling. If you've trained with me at the Stark Combat Academy or in a workshop in various places, this will be an aid memoir. It will help you remember the techniques we've covered. But you can totally use this as a starting point to enter into the world of Monty and the Italian two-handed sword. So, the sword itself is a sword which comes to the nose or eyes of its bearer. It is a simple design. It does not have tying lugs or rings. It has a wide cross guard, a long handle with a reasonably small pommel, so it works as a counterbalance rather than adding weight to the sword. The sword itself, the length of the handle, as is common with most Italian and Iberian swords of that time, is one quarter of the total length of the sword. So, first, how does Monty think about throwing blows? First, we throw the sword with an extended arm. Then we follow leaning with the body. Then we recover, conducting the sword in a circle. So we throw, follow, circle. Throw, follow, circle to either side. This is the basic technique that underlies Monty's approach to the sword. We have a fluid flowing motion. Now the levata is broken down into four separate techniques. First technique, or the first blow of the levata, is as follows. So it's a rising blow, or montante, followed by reverse of montante, You may notice the first step is short, the second step is long and committed. Monty often wants to open the guard of her opponent by throwing a short blow as a feint and then entering in earnest with his second blow. A short blow followed by a long blow. So again, or shorter, This is the first blow of the levata of the sword. Second blow uses two offside blows. So as a right-hander, I'll be doing these to the left. If you are left-handed, you would mirror image this action. So the second blow is often taught as two rising blows on Montante's from the reverse side. However, Monty likes to transform the second blow from a cut into a thrust to the face in motion. And he calls this action a guida. Guida means guide in Spanish. So let us look at this action. First, we throw a rising blow with a short step. Then we start the rising blow, pull the hilt under my arm, 
to snap up the back edge of the sword into a truss to the face. Then we would draw covering our open line on the opposite side. Again. So this is the second blow of the levata of the sword. And the turn to four is the same action, but on the dominant side. So I'll show this quickly. It's the same idea, just mirror imaged. The rising blow shows an intention that is then changed to a rising trust, which can, can draw a parry and get around the defense of an opponent. So now we have three of the four blows of the Levata. In the fourth and last blow, we're going to do something you haven't seen in the Levata, which is a downwards blow. Even though they're the bread and butter of moose sword fighting systems, Monty is quite sparing with them generally preferring rising blows from either side. So the fourth and final blow of the Levata. So this involves redirecting the sword in an efficient way. We start with an offside, a reversal montante with a short step. We circle around, we throw a reversal pendente with a long committed step. And we let the sword momentum carry through the target while keeping our hands in front of us. So the sword is here. I will demonstrate this from the other side for a better angle on this. Let's look at the fourth blow of the Levada from the other side for clarity. So we throw a feint with a short step. We cycle through to an earnest downward blow. We let the sword swing through without moving our hands from in front of us so it sheds momentum. And we throw a rising blow to clear our path before we step back to escape from the engagement. So we throw a blow to come in, to open, and an earnest blow to strike, and a clearing blow to escape once more. So at an angle, that would look something like this. So these are the four blows of the Levata. You can put them together to make a sequence which can be a good way to train. And these so blows also apply to the long sword and the single-handed sword. With the smaller sword, the actions become tighter and faster, and it's easier to feint and redirect. But you can absolutely feint with a big two-hander because it is a terrifying weapon to face if you have a sharp two and a half kilo sword facing you. So people will care about your actions, and you can actually sell a feint pretty convincingly if you throw this with steel in the face. Let's close by looking at this levata as a sequence where we put the four blows together. And there you have it. This is Pietro Monte's Levata of the Sword, or the beginning learnings of the sword. And by drilling these techniques, you learn how to do short and long blows, to coordinate your body with the weight of the sword, to redirect the sword in various ways, and to convert from cuts into trusts. So even though it is a relatively short sequence of blows, it actually gives a lot of the fundamental movement with the sword. So, 
I have a theory that Monty teaches this sequence as a way of familiarizing yourself with how to move with the large sword. And I would recommend, if you can, train with a large sword or a large stick just to get more sense of the flow and momentum because the sword teaches you how to move because the heavier the weapon, the less poor technique it allows you to get away with. With the large sword, you have to be better in your body mechanics, better in your flow, better in your technique because it will give you the feedback to help you sharpen that and it will tell you when you're wrong. So, thank you for your attention today and happy training.